Yuji is awakening as the demon god to take down Sukuna. In his arsenal are six specific powers that can make him the strongest sorcerer in history. The first being left right good night as he's blessed by the spark of black therefore can activate black flash at will. Second is the special ability to hurt the soul, just like when a woman rejects you. Third is his special body as he's the son of the mastermind Kenjaku from a thousand years ago. Fourth, he inherits Sukuna's abilities and has genetics from the Heian era. Fifth is swapping souls. And lastly, the one we all forgot about, the power to change the memories of his opponents, like he did against Choso and Todo. You forgot about that, didn't you? Well, we finally have the answer. Yuji's entire life has been manufactured and manipulated by forces beyond him, but he stood up each time to fight back. Let's begin with the fact that Yuji was built different. I mean, what kid is casually breaking sports records? Even without curse energy, Yuji could run a 50 meter track within 3 seconds, which is faster than Usain Bolt. Megami even assumed that Itadori might have a heavenly restriction like Maki Zeni, who has become as strong as Toji, easily being of special grade. There are even more hints towards Yuji's demon god allegations as we go further into the series. One of the prime hints is of course when he eats Sukuna's finger, which would be fatal to anybody as a capable vessel's odds is one in a million. But that just so happened to be Yuji's purpose. While some of y'all might chalk this up to oh my god classic shonen tropes or plot armor, Gege was busy cooking because Kenjaku in chapter 143 is revealed to be his father father and mother. He purposely placed the finger at the school so that Yuji would consume it and created the perfect scenario for his plan to succeed. It all began with him taking over Kaori Itadori's body with his curse technique and proceeding to take back shots to give birth to Yuji, making him just like Choso, having three parents in total. Kenjaku tells us that Yuji is the eye of the storm of the new era, setting off the signal fire for it. As long as he and Sukuna are alive, the chain of curses will never end. Choso claims Kenjaku is wrong. Yuji cannot be the root of all unhappiness, as his 1000 year plan to create a new monster accumulates all the negative energy of the world and will cause great destruction. But looking back at chapter 214, Sukuna states that Kenjaku does the grossest things, one of them being his own hybrids a mix of curses and humans. Through the infamous Naruto Shikamo incident, Kenjaku gave birth to Choso and his brothers. However, Kenjaku deemed them to be failures and wanted to create something stronger, hence giving birth to Yuji himself, the perfect vessel. What's more, it's not Yuji's body that is resistant to Sukuna, but a special innate ability which allows Yuji to subdue the king of curses. Even Sukuna huh? was shocked when this happened for the first time. Gojo commented on this remarkable potential and said that Yuji's special properties only occur once in a thousand years. 80% of your innate talent as a sorcerer comes from your genetics. Since Kenjaku has the ability to swap bodies, Yuji gained a derivative to swap souls. Consider Kenjaku's other sons for example. Choso, Iso and Kechizu, all three had their own curse technique, blood manipulation, directly from the Kamo clan. But wait a second, Gojo stated Yuji has no innate technique and claims over time he will learn Sukuna's. We witnessed this manifest in chapter 238 with Yuji's fingers being exactly like him as Yuji was confirmed to be a curse object soaked in Sukuna's curse energy in chapter 220. Therefore, was Gojo wrong and Itadori had a technique all along or did he learn to swap souls through another? 
another ability? Well, the answer lies in the fact that Gojo with six eyes can determine someone's curse technique with just a glance, as seen in this panel. Which means Yuji's soul swap ability is acquired through how Kenjaku taught Sukuna to store his soul into curse objects. As both of these characters learned how to swap their bodies with a secret method as mentioned in chapter 228. However, since Yuji is pretty much a curse object right now, he understood this concept better than everyone else. Remember, one of the reasons all these ancient sorcerers joined the Culling Games was because of their curiosity to find out how Kinjaku and Sukuna achieved this impossible phenomena. Now, in chapter 220, Choso gave Yuki's lifelong information about souls to Yuji for him to study, therefore creating the rest for him to unlock this ability. Yuki's goal was for humans to break away from curse energy altogether and no longer produce it, which in effect will also remove curses from the world. Whereas Kinjaku desires the opposite outcome by optimizing curse energy, with Yuji Itadori being his answer. Kinjaku purposely made him the demon god to vessel the new creation that he plans to create at the end of the culling game. As a curse object. For example, the foreshadowing from Gojo stating Yuji occurs once in a thousand years is reiterated in chapter 214. As once Sukuna takes a closer look at him, he states Kenjaku does the grossest things and that Yuji's genetics are from a different time period. 1000 years ago would make it the Heian era. All of this links to chapter 222, revealing Yuji's new ability to swap souls with Kusakabe. Now, now another reason he unlocked this ability is due to Yuji's understanding of the essence of the soul, due to his proficiency with Black Flash. Think, Think about, about it. it. A kid who only knew about curse energy for one month had just used it, whereas people who knew about sorcery their whole life could not. According to Nanami, just hitting a single Black Flash, regardless of whether it was skill or simply luck enables the user to enter a zone like athletes experience in sports. Once a sorcerer has performed it, their understanding of curse energy cannot even be compared to someone who hasn't as it's risen too high. Manipulating curse energy becomes as simple and natural as breathing, resulting in the feeling that the user is at the center of everything. This is directly linked to Yuji's realization of one's existence as body, mind and soul each and every sense mentioned in chapter 37. All three parts of one's existence are completely in sync. Yuji displayed this ability against Mahito as Black Flash allows you to utilize 120% of your potential and he performed it at will. This is proof that Yuji will reach way above the special grade as Black Flash helped him understand the essence of the soul. For example, having Sukuna in him had already let Yuji gain the ability to see soul contours. But by chapter 27, Mahito mentioned that Yuji can literally see them. This knowledge alone made him the nemesis of Mahito and his curse technique as he could see Mahito's soul and attack it directly unlike everyone else. Mahito would protect his soul from Yuji via the use of curse energy. Nanami told us that one cannot protect their soul unlike their bodies. It is impossible unless you recognize your own soul. Through this, Yuji understood the extent to which his soul existed in his body and where Sukuna's soul began. Therefore, he became a perfect cage, giving another reason why Yuji could take over his body despite being a vessel. Which means Yuji has an opportunity to defeat Sukuna by directly attacking it. Looking back holistically, Mahito believed that if he looked inward, he could understand himself and his true nature. It was only after he used Black Flash that 
Loki could transform. He states, now that I've learned Black Flash, I finally understand my true soul. Therefore, we now know why Sukuna has morphed his body for true jujutsu, as he understands the essence of his soul, mind, and body. But why does the community believe Sukuna is underestimating Yuji's demon god title? Well, as early as chapter 34, Todo already claimed Yuji was physically stronger than him, someone who was in grade 1. And during the Shibuya incident, Mei Mei, one of the strongest grade 1 sorcerers, who is respected by Satoru freaking Gojo, stated that Yuji's growth without a technique is nothing to scoff at. Later in his fight against an evolved Mahito, Yuji took him out with one black flash that had all his curse energy. And let's not forget, Gege confirmed that Yuji, with the help of Todo, could even kill Jogo in five black flash punches, a special grade curse equal to eight to nine Sukuna fingers. Someone, the king of curses, even recognized himself as strong. And to further prove the demon god allegations, look no further than chapter 139. Despite still not having recovered from his injuries, Choso claims he's impressed by Yuji's power and his control of curse energy with unreal physical strength, referring to him as one. However, the most impressive feats come in chapter 214, destroying a building just by jumping off it. And his durability is unmatched as he tanked a a full power Sukuna punch at 15 fingers through multiple skyscrapers like nothing happened. When you compare Gojo's punches to the likes of Yuta who is special grade and Hakairi, they said one punch from Gojo made them vomit and incapacitated. Yuji is built different. But here comes the ultimate answer as to why he can alter the memories of his opponents like he did with Choso and Todo. Mahito posed the question regarding the body and soul. What came first in chapter 22? A complex question with an equally complex answer. But since I'm revealing it, I'd appreciate if you can smash the like button, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Because as we know, Mahito believed that the soul comes first. But this philosophy arises from his lethal power, idol transfiguration. It is the ability to manipulate and reshape the souls of anyone he chooses with just a touch, allowing him to disfigure the body of his victim completely, which led Mahito to believe that the shape of the body is defined by the shape of the soul. This means the soul is a manifestation of a person's essence, where the body is the one that attaches to it and not the other way around. Mahito then claims emotions are simply the metabolism of the soul. If that is true, and since negative emotions give rise to curse energy, this establishes a strong link between both of them, telling us that the soul is the core of one's existence. We can see the flaw in this argument, as emotions are nothing but chemical reactions in the body, which of course Kinjaku pointed out. An example is chapter 91, when Geto responded to Gojo and tried to choke himself, momentarily regaining control and that is something that hasn't happened before. Thus, according to Kinjaku, the body is the soul and the soul is the body, making both of them interdependent, which is why Geto could do that. It also explains how the host memories are retained even when someone like Kinjaku takes over the body. We were told in chapter 212 that is how Sukuna learned all of Megami's and Yuji's memories by being their vessel which means that it doesn't matter what came first between body and soul because they cannot be separated without repercussions. For example, Angel stated there is a high chance of death when separating Sukuna from his host in chapter 199. However, it's not impossible to revert possessed hosts, but it's extremely likely they would die because the curse object and the body are fused. So in the end, it's difficult to strip one away. But haven't you realized guys? Answer as to why Yuji has gained Sukuna's abilities. As
as he is a cursed object soaked in his energy. It's fused together. As a result, Itadori's death after eating 20 fingers would be the best way to kill Sukuna, according to the Jujutsu higher-ups. But Kenjaku and Mahito have different opinions because they live in completely different worlds. As Kenjaku told us, the techniques of a sorcerer dictate their world and life is poetic in that regard. Mahito can manipulate souls, whilst Kenjaku can swap bodies, making them polar opposites in their ideology. But, however, as I told you, Gege is cooking because he wants Yuji Itadori to give the answer to this question with his new power. Yuji learned in chapter 37 that we exist in this world as one body, mind and soul. It's so obvious that almost everyone has taken this maxim for granted. But you know what's crazy? The information of the body and soul is different. Proof of this is in chapter 147. Yaga explained the secret of his curse technique. You replicate soul information from physical information, then input that into the cursed corpse core. On the other hand, Ogami Seance technique allows her to summon the body or soul of a dead person in her grandson. Her rule is to never summon the soul's information. However, since Toji has a special body due to heavenly restriction, the grandson's soul was defeated. The conclusion that can be drawn is that the soul and body are just strings of information that are entirely different but symbiotic. Therefore, the answer has arrived. Yuji has a strong soul that could birth new memories that never existed before in Choso and Todo because the data information within their body that is connected to their brains is being changed to experience these memories. In chapter 106, it states a memory was born inside Choso's brain. Even Sakuna doesn't have any idea of how this is happening when he witnessed it. Remember, this is not a curse technique as Gege completely debunked that in an interview. This means Yuji is changing the strings of data within the body and soul. His father Kenjaku acquired different curse techniques through his brain hopping like the anti-gravity and curse spirit manipulation. They were dead so their souls didn't have to be subdued the way Sukuna did Megami with a Kodaku ritual. So this means curse techniques are not part of the soul but of the body. Chapter 230 pretty much confirmed this as we were told that they are engraved in the brain's prefrontal cortex. So, Yuji has a strong soul, stronger than even Sukuna, with his indomitable will as just as it is natural for Sukuna to kill humans and cause misery being a calamity, Yuji is the same. Yuji states to Mahito that he is the same as him. It's natural for him to always kill curses and become a calamity for them. He declared to Sukuna, you will always be a freaking curse in chapter 214. Therefore, he will definitely take down the king of curses and kill him. Now, if you want to enjoy more peak fiction and want to understand why Satoru Gojo is not dead, watch this video on your screen right now.